Maths isn't fun, but statistics definitely can be. In this video, we're doing something different. Let's look at the kings of Gondor, and let's look at some of the interesting statistics. There were 33 kings of Gondor, although two of them were co-kings. These kings ruled from 3320 of the Second Age to 2050 of the Third Age, a total of 2,171 years. This meant each king had an average rule of 67.84 years. If you pause the video, you can go through and see the names for yourself. However, not all kings were created equal. The longest ruling king of Gondor was Torondor, who ruled for a massive 162 years. He was closely followed by Maneldil, who ruled for 156 years. The gap between second and third was significant, with Hyarmendekil I coming in third at 134 years. Not all kings were so lucky. Telemnar ruled for a mere two years before his death to plague. He was not alone when it came to ruling for a few short years. Three other kings ruled for less than ten years. Narmakil II, who ruled for six years, Ondaha, who ruled for eight years, and Aenur, the last king, who ruled for a mere seven years. The length of these reigns largely depended on when these men were born. As the Third Age continued, the lifespan of the Dúnedain slowly but steadily decreased. As a result, no king ever lived a longer natural lifespan than a predecessor that had also lived a natural lifespan, with the exception of one. Kalmakil lived one year longer than his predecessor, Narmakil I, although in this case, they were brothers. Two kings did reach the same age. Ostaha and Turamba both lived to be 270. As a result, it should come as no surprise that the longest lived king of Gondor was one of the earliest, Maneldil, who lived to be 281. The shortest lived king, who lived a natural lifespan, was Aenil II, who lived to be 160. Aenil II was the only king to have a natural death before the age of 200, his lifespan alarmingly shorter than his predecessors. Of course, many kings did not live a natural lifespan, which accounts for the very short reigns that some kings had. Of Gondor's 33 kings, 11 of them died an early death. Of those 11, 8 kings were slain in battle. Anarion, Isildur, Romandakil I, Kiriandil, Aldamir, Minardil, Narmakil II, and Ondaher. Two of these were slain by orcs, three were killed by Easterlings, two were killed by Haradrim, and one was killed by the Corsairs. Minardil was the only king to be slain in de facto Gondorian territory. The other three kings experienced different fates. Aenil I drowned at sea when his fleet was caught in a storm, sinking many ships and killing many men. Telemnar, along with all of his children, died when the Great Plague struck Gondor in the 17th century. Aenur, the last king, disappeared after accepting the Witch King's challenge and riding to Minas Morgul. His fate is unknown. If he was lucky, he might have been slain. If not, he may have been tortured to death. Of these kings who died early, Telemnar also has the unfortunate title of the shortest lived, dying at 120. At that age, he should have lived for another 100 years. Aenur lived only slightly longer, to age 122. The next shortest was Ondaher, who reached 157. However, the rest of them lived lengthy lives before being killed. Isildur, Anarion, Romendakil I, Aenil I, and Aldemir were all over 200 years old when they perished. Gondor's line of kings ended when Aenur, the last king, died without child, but he was not the only childless king of Gondor. In fact, there were two other kings who died childless, Taranon Falastur and Narmakil I. In Taranon's case, the kingship passed to his nephew, but in the case of Narmakil I, it passed to his elderly brother. Two other kings were also not succeeded by their children, on account of them being dead. Telemnar, who has already appeared plenty of times on this list, and Ondaher. Telemnar's throne passed to his nephew, but Ondaher's throne would end up passing to his second cousin once removed. The fortunes of these kings of Gondor largely depended on whether Gondor was at war or at peace. Of Gondor's 33 kings, only 13 were lucky enough to have largely peaceful reigns, most of them being earlier kings. Gondor's other 20 kings experienced some manner of war whilst they ruled. Three of them warred with Sauron or his direct servants. Six of them warred with the Easterlings. Two with Black Numenorians, 
two with the Haradrim, two with the Corsairs, one against fellow Gondorians, and eight with a combination of several enemies. Six of these kings would change their names to reflect their achievements in these wars. Tarostar would become Romendakil I, Taranon would add Falastur to his name, Kiryahur would become Hyarmendakil I, Menalkar would become Romendakil II, Vinyarion would become Hyarmendakil II, and Telumatar would add Umbardakil to his name. Two other kings would also change their names for different reasons. Etanatar II would add Alcarin to his name to reflect the glory of his realm, and Vinataria would change his name to Eldakar when he moved to Gondor. Not all kings of Gondor are recorded as official. One man, Castamir, known as the Usurper, ruled Gondor for a period of ten years after throwing Eldakar in a civil war. Eldakar later returned and killed him in battle. Castamir was struck from the records. In another case, Romendakil II, then known as Minelkar, ruled as regent of Gondor during the reigns of his father and uncle, Narmakil I and Kalmakil, on account of them being lazy. Although he only officially ruled for 62 years, Romendakil II was the de facto ruler of Gondor for 126 years, although it isn't counted this way. After the War of the Ring, Gondor would become the larger half of the new reunited kingdom, ruled by Alessa and his descendants. Of this period, there are only two known kings, Ilesa himself and his son, Eldarion. Ilesa would rule the reunited kingdom for 122 years and would die at age 210. His son, Eldarion, would rule for 100 years and according to what we know, would live to be 219. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it or at least found it interesting. I really enjoyed making this video, so if you're interested in more of them, please let me know. Until then, thanks, farewell, and remember that pineapple does not belong on pizza.